to Collages.net's webinar series, Maternity Sessions 101, Part 1. Uh, I really want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to attend our webinar today. My name is Kevin Casey, and I will be hosting the webinar. And as a product workflow consultant here at Collages, I've spoken to thousands of studios over the past eight years. I also now work very closely with the marketing team to develop online tutorials and webinars. Today I'm joined by a very special guest, Pete Wright owner of PW Photography located in Richmond, Virginia. Thank you so much for joining us today, Pete. How are you doing? I'm doing All right, awesome. Thanks for asking. Awesome. Um, so before we jump into the webinar, um, what I want to do is I do want to go over a few basic features of how to use the webinar software. Um, as you'll see in the upper right-hand corner, you will see a window very similar to this. Um, this is simply just part of the program. If you need to minimize it at any time, you simply want to click the orange arrow here. That will minimize the window. And then if you need to maximize it at all, uh, simply click the orange arrow again, and we'll be able to maximize it. Um, now, everyone is muted, uh, so you can only hear Pete and I speak. But if you do have any questions throughout the webinar, please use the chat feature, and I will be answering uh, the questions as quickly as I can while Pete is, is walking you through the webinar. Um, throughout the webinar, I will also be collecting questions for the live Q&A at the very end of the webinar, where, uh, where I will be taking some of the questions and asking Pete. Um, so if anyone has any questions, feel free to chat me. But other than that, I am going to pass it on over to Pete right now, and, uh, and he is going to take control. Hi everybody. As you guys were able to see today, we're a little bit about her. You say, hey, I'm gonna try to see if I can get this minimized so we can all see my screen. We're gonna talk a little bit about maternity sales today and how to basically use maternity sales to the maximum potential to make sure that you're getting your best possible sales out of them. Um, so many people I feel like today are saying, yes, I can do maternity sessions even though they don't have any experience. And then when they get in there, even if they end up taking some really great photos, they miss the potential for sales because they haven't set a high, high bar for expectations. So what we're going to do today is talk about how to really maximize your potential for sales in maternity sessions and also just how to make sure that you're successful in what you're capturing during those sessions. Uh, to us, uh, our studio has been around for 15 years now, and I've been a photographer for 24. And during the 15 years that our studio has been open, and my wife, and I forgot to mention, my wife works with me full time here. So uh, during the 15 years that we've been open, we work really, really hard to make sure that, that in our community and in our area, we, we have an appearance as a high-end studio and that everybody that sees our work recognizes us based on what they're seeing. So we're going to talk a lot about that today in terms of our marketing, how the sessions go, and uh, a little bit about the products that we sell and things like that. This is typically a three-hour stand-up program, so we're going to see how much we can squeeze into one hour today. So let's start talking about marketing. And marketing is kind of where you really get your foothold in the community. It, it's it's where you start getting your name out there. And the old adage of somebody has to see you three times before they remember you is a true statement. Um, and, and to that point, if they see you three times and every time they see you, something is completely different, then they really didn't see you three times. Uh, meaning if you are constantly changing your logo or if you're not using your logo or if you're not putting your website out there, or if from one thing to the next, your look isn't consistent. Uh, it's, to us, it's important that our website looks like our business cards, our business cards look like our letterhead, our letterhead looks like the postcards that we're using for marketing and sending out. There's a consistent look all the way across. Uh, and that's a big part, that's that's just branding. That's, that's outright making sure that uh, you look the same all the way through. It, it would be the equivalent of going and buying a bottle of Coca-Cola, and then when you go get a can, the can doesn't look like the bottle. 
uh, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, McDonald's, all of them are huge on branding and making sure that you see those logos and they look the same and are recognizable every single time you see them. So it's hugely important that you guys are keeping a consistent look from, from one aspect to the next on your entire business. So let's talk a little bit about how we do our marketing. And our two biggest points of marketing are medical offices and store displays. Um, we are in several medical offices and stores here in town, and uh, we make it a point to really try to get out and expand our displays and also keep our displays fresh as, as often as possible. Um, the first one we'll talk about is doctor's offices. And this is actually a split screen. We actually, uh, this, this, uh, this is Virginia Physicians for Women, and it's one of the state's largest uh, OBGYNs. And their waiting room here was so large, we actually had to take two photos and put them together just to be able to show the size of the room. Now, a lot of people say, well, how, how do you get into a doctor's office? Well, the reality is it's not as hard as you would think. Um, everybody that's listening today either is a woman or knows a woman. And that's a steadfast rule. You, you're either one or the other. Um, so everybody here should either be a, be a patient in an OBGYN or know somebody that's a patient in an OBGYN. So that's your first, first foot in the door. Um, and so with us, basically what we did, and with this particular one, my wife was actually a patient of this one, but with other ones that we have, we talk to our friends and to our family members and ask them, hey, next time you have an appointment, can you look and see if they have a display there? Do they have any portraits? Do they have any photographs there uh, showing you know, maternity or infants or, or anything like that? We want to know what they have. Uh, in this case, this one actually did have portraits on display, but they actually approached us uh, about having a display there because the display of portraits they had there weren't ones that a photographer had approached them about. They were ones that they had actually purchased themselves. They decided they wanted to have portraits of babies up. Uh, so they went to a frame shop, bought the frames, and through the frame shop uh, made arrangements to get some portraits to put in the frames. So. Typically, if there are uh, images on display in an OBGYN and we know it's a display from a photographer, we will not approach that, that uh, OBGYN because it's, it's already kind of a cut and cutthroat world as it is. We really don't need to go around and steal business from other photographers because I understand that's their livelihood just as much as it is mine. So if somebody else has a display somewhere, I'm just going to leave it alone and let them have it. Um, but if we find out, like in this case, where they bought the frames and then they also paid for the portrait so that they could have something to put on the walls, then you know it, it opened a door for us. And again, they actually approached us and said, hey, "We really want to have your stuff on the walls here." But if that's not, if if it's a, a scenario where they don't have anything on display, or maybe they just have simple art or or nothing really grand or special hanging up in there that would be a, a photographer's display, that really gives you the opportunity to approach them about uh, bringing in a little bit more of a warm feel to their, their doctor's office and their waiting rooms. So typically what we do is we ask the, uh, the patient or our friend that's a, a patient at, at the office or if we're approaching them, we ask them if they'd be interested in having us come in and help them put up a display that's going to create a little bit more warm and inviting environment in their office. Uh, we understand that you know going to the doctor's office isn't the most pleasant thing in the world. So if you have something a little bit more comfortable to look at or something to really enjoy while you're sitting there, a lot of times it'll help you relax. Uh, so. That typically helps us out. We also offer to put up images on display in their, not only in their waiting room, but in their exam rooms as well. In this case, this doctor's office, uh, they wanted, I think it was 18 gallery wraps to start out with, and then it actually expanded and grew. Uh, if you look at this wall that's on the screen in front of you, there's nothing smaller than a 20 by 24 on the wall there. In fact, uh, they were building this new location when they they were moving and building this new location when they talked to us about this display and they invited us to actually come in and be a part of the planning process for the decor and the, the design they said we want you to come in these are the colors we're thinking about so we want you to know the colors 
as you are uh, taking the photographs that come in. And then we also want you to uh, talk to us about the, the green stripe that we want to put up there and where it should be and how big it should be. Uh, they, they actually, we wanted it to be a little bit larger because we wanted to put the portraits within the green stripe. And they said, well, the, the, the interior designer that's also helping with this wants it to be at this size. So we, the biggest thing that we had influence over was the height. So we were able to influence the height of it and put the portraits right where we did. We also wanted to try to get the TV, but they weren't letting that happen. So <laughs> we, uh, we just have the portraits there. Now, all of these are gallery wraps, and we get our gallery wraps at collages.net. So that's also a really good opportunity for us to go to them and really quickly and easily say the portraits that we have on file, we want to get gallery wraps of each of these. And, and collages has great pricing on that and, and more importantly, has a really a really great uh, delivery system for us so that we know that when we get them, they're not messed up or, or uh, banged up. And so many times in the past with other places we got gallery wraps, we received them and the corners were banged up or they were or messed up and we ended up having to get them redone. So this worked out really well for us. Um, additionally, if you see the tables that are in here, the, the between the couches and against the walls, on those tables we also have uh, cards of cards basically inviting the, the patients to come in and try a session with us and get our free 5 by 7 So that opens the door. And we change the offer. We don't leave the same card with the same offer there for too terribly long because we want to see what works and what's most effective. And ironically enough, a lot of times it's more effective to give somebody 50% off of a session and maybe a free 5 by 7 than a free session and a free 5 by 7 because if they feel like they're getting something for free, the perceived value of it is lower. But if they feel like they're getting half price off of something, then they feel like there's some value to it because they're having to pay. It also, by having half off of a session or a discount off of a session, it also ensures you that they're probably going to keep their appointment. If you give them something for free and they have absolutely nothing on the line forcing them to come in, then the reality is they could cancel and it doesn't cost them anything, but it costs you a lot of time and potential appointments that you could have scheduled. So uh, for the longest time, we actually had the free session and a free 5 by 7 and then we switched to a half-off session and a free 5 by 7 to come in and try us. Um, the other thing we did when we, when we uh, got into this particular OBGYN was uh, they actually approached us and they said, we want to put you in our welcome package. And just about every OBGYN we've ever spoken to has a welcome package for new patients that when the new patient comes in the door, they say, here's some information about us, here's some forms that we want you to fill out, here's some other things that we think are important. Uh, as you see, we are the very first thing in there. When you open that up, the front thing there is a card on the right-hand side that has information about our studios and then has a discount offer on the back side. That's a really, really nice thing because we know not only are they seeing our portraits when they walk in, but they're getting a package with our information in it. So they're seeing right off the front that we're being endorsed by this OBGYN, OBGYN beyond just being the core for their, for their offices. This is one of the waiting rooms that they have, and you can see we actually put two uh, gallery wraps in each of, the, each of the nine waiting rooms. Like I said, we actually started out with 18 portraits and then uh, they asked us to expand and add extras, so we ended up adding nine extras. So I think that's 27 that we have in there now. So yeah, it's it's a bit of it's a bit of a pill to swallow because it's not cheap to put 27 gallery wraps in a display. But I can say that we get calls weekly, several calls a week from the OBGYN setting appointments, and it's been really valuable for us. In fact, we had a uh, client called us not too terribly long ago that was pregnant. She was uh, there for her maternity visit and while she was sitting on the table waiting for the doctor to come in, she called us in her, in her gown uh, and said, I'm interested in getting some information about your portrait session. I said, that's great. How did you hear about it? She said, well, I'm actually sitting on the exam table in, uh, at the OBGYN and I'm looking at your work on the wall. I said, you know, that's fantastic. I, I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying the portrait. She said, yeah, it's, it took a very stressful situation, and I was able to sit down and look at these portraits, and I was able to envision myself with my child, and I was able to, you know, see how beautiful it is to be where I am right now, and it helped me relax, and I knew I needed to do this. And I said, you know, that's great. 
but why don't you finish your appointment and give me a call back, and as soon as you call me back when you're done, we'll get you scheduled to answer any questions you have. It was a unique scenario. It's not often that you have something like that happen, but it's an ultimate compliment to have somebody call you immediately when the emotion hits them like that. So the OBGYN is huge for us. It, it's really a great opportunity for us to get our names out there and be in front of what's essentially a captive audience. They have to sit there and wait. So every minute they're there, and you know, unfortunately for all of us, doctors aren't the most punctual, so you do spend a good amount of time sitting in the waiting room and then sitting in the exam room. So if the only thing that they have to sit there and look at are our portraits, and as you can see, and it's kind of hard to tell, but the bottom right-hand corner of all of our portraits has our studio name and website on it. You'll see a PW in the bottom right-hand corner and then right under it, pwphotography.com. And we sign our portraits differently uh, if it's a client portrait or a display portrait. If it's a client portrait, it just has the PW from our logo on it. If it's a display portrait, it has the PW, and then underneath it, it has pwphotography.com. We stopped using the www a few years ago because I think most people understand that there should be a www in front of it. But at the end of the day, you can actually enter pwphotography.com, and it still comes up. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the other display we have, here in town we have uh, several boutique shops that we have displays in, but one of them is called USA Baby, and it's actually in a national chain. If any of you are familiar with IKEA, it's very, very similar to an IKEA uh, in that when you walk around, their furniture is set up in in basically small room displays. So you get to walk around and see how a room would be set up and designed and, and have its decor done. And this was another easy door to open. Uh, basically, when we went into this store, we went in as customers. And we kind of had dual motivation. We went in as customers. Um, because at the time we were pregnant with twins. My wife uh, was pregnant with twins. In fact, the portrait that you're looking at on the screen here of the little tiny baby curled up on the wall, that is our daughter Caitlin when she was six days old. So, uh, But we went in as customers and we started walking around looking at the various furniture, finding cribs and things like that. Well, you know, when you're looking at buying two of everything and their furniture is not necessarily inexpensive. I think their cribs start at $550 and go up from there. So when you're looking at buying two of everything, you all of a sudden become a little bit more important and uh, getting the owner or the manager to come out and talk to you is pretty easy to do. But in general, even if you're not pregnant, you know, you can go in as a customer that's buying a, a present for somebody that is pregnant, you know, a gift for someone that, that's expecting. And even if you really don't know somebody that is, you know, you can kind of fake it and say, I'm here to buy a present for somebody uh, at any boutique, whether it's I'm here to get a dress for a child, or in some cases you could just say, hey, I'm a photographer and I'm here to buy some props and I love the dresses that you have. But whatever opens that door, coming in as a customer is always going to open the door for you a lot easier rather than coming in saying, I want you to do this for me. If you go in saying, I'm here to buy from you because I value your product, then they're going to value our product more. Uh, in our case, we were walking around and we noticed they sold picture frames and they had all these rooms, but none of them had photos. And when we talked to the store manager, who was actually the owner, we said, you know, we really love what you've done here. You've got this great display that gives us a feel of what our nursery might look like. But i got to tell you, our nursery is going to include photographs because you know, we want we want our children to grow up with pictures of mommy and daddy on the wall. We want, you know, our children to see photographs of themselves so they can see how much we value them, value and cherish them. So, you know, we, we told them it would make this feel even more warm and more intimate, more realistic if you had portraits on the walls here. And they said, that's a great idea. Can you do that for us? And we said, you know, we can not only do that for you, but we want to try to help you make money. We want to help you increase your bottom line. And that's really kind of what piques their interest. Um, basically, what we do with each of our uh, boutiques or store displays is we find out kind of what their average sale is and what their sales goal is. And it's always going to be two different things. If their average sale is $75, their goal sale goal might be $125 if it's like a clothing place. In this store scenario, they actually had two. Uh, they had kind of a low-end sale group and a high-end sale group. Their low-end sale average was about $750, and they wanted to get up to 1000 
and then their high-end sale group was at about two thousand dollars and they were trying to get them to go up to twenty five hundred dollars so what we said was in addition to letting us go around and put portraits on the wall what we want to do is provide you with gift certificates and these gift certificates are for you guys to use as incentive they would be a gift certificate from you to the customer where if the customer spends x amount of dollars they would get back a certain amount toward a portrait credit to come in and try our studio now it is an outright portrait credit there's no you have to spend money they could literally come in and use it and it's a portrait credit that's part session fee which covers their entire session fee and a little bit toward portraits it's not a ton so they're not going to get a whole heck of a lot uh, and we based it on which amount it was so if it was a lower amount it was a much smaller amount if it was that higher number where they're trying to get them to 2500 it's a much higher amount the gamble to us was look if this is a client who's willing to spend twenty five hundred dollars on cribs and they're probably more than willing to spend a decent amount of money on portraits as well so we're willing to give up a little bit more to try to get that client to make that purchase to get into the card so at the end of the day what ended up happening was not only did we have these great displays on the wall but the salesperson would walk around the store with them and as they were walking around showing them the various cribs and things they were also pointing out our work and saying look at these beautiful portraits and all these look fantastic because they knew it was a hook if they got everybody looking at the portraits, if they got everybody's interest peaked in them, that when they went to say, hey, you know what, you're sitting at $2,200 right now. If you spend $300 more, you hit our $2,500 point, which is going to get you a gift certificate for X amount of dollars to be able to go get some of these great portraits that you've been seeing on the wall. And it won't cost you a thing. It's our gift to you. And when we give them the gift certificates, it outright says, from USA Baby 2, and then they fill in the 2 part. So it does not come from us. It comes from the store. And that's really important because it needs to feel like the store is giving them something and that we're not trying to sell them ourselves. When, we, when they come into us, we want them to feel completely, uh, have no feelings toward us in that they feel like we sold them. We want them to come in with high expectations of getting great portraits, and that's it. Uh, the other thing that we do as well at these store displays is we, we give all of the store employees and the owners an opportunity for us to photograph them and put their families and their children on the wall. Uh, any opportunity we can have to have the salespeople in the store show our portraits off, uh, we're going to take advantage of it. And to be honest with you, if your children are hanging on the wall of your store, you're probably going to show that portrait off quite a bit, even if somebody's not a potential customer which is just one more opportunity for somebody to say, wow, that is a great portrait. Where did you get that done? Uh, and we never charge the store employees at all uh, for the session. And basically what we do is we tell them, hey, come into the studio. We're going to give you a free session, and we want to hang your children and your family on the wall there. And then when we rotate those portraits out, put new stuff in, we're going to let you keep it. So they're always willing to come in because they know they're going to get something for free and every once in a while they'll actually buy additional stuff as well because they don't want to have to wait for the store for us to rotate the portraits out which we do about every six months or so uh, here's another display and as you can see that's actually my wife with my son charlie when he was six days old uh, we put several in there i just decided to grab two because like these other people i like to show off my children um, and then you can see the small frame over to the right hand side. You can't tell, but those are our photographs inside uh, each of the little uh, holes for the three picture frames. Uh, here you go. Uh, here is a couple of the frames that they have, again, with our portraits on them. And you can see our logo and our website on, in the bottom corners of each one. So, a little bit more about marketing. And this is huge for us. You know, everybody always says there isn't such a thing as a free lunch, and we said we're going to turn that around. Uh, we basically, once a month, we go to the OBGYN, and we'll go to the, the store a little bit less often, but the OBGYN we do very, very often. About once a month, we go to the OBGYN, and we find out from them what day is a good day for us to come in and treat them to lunch. Most OBGYNs that we deal with have set hour that they actually essentially close for appointments because uh, they have found that it's easier to basically from 12 to 1 not see patients and let everybody do lunch at the same time 
rather than have things staggered and all of a sudden get a rush of unexpected patients or something like that and not be equipped for it. So that made it easy for us. Basically what we do is we approach our OBGYNs and find out what day is good for us and good day, what day is good for them, and we let them know we want to bring lunch by and treat, the, treat their entire staff to lunch. Uh, I think the OBGYN that I was showing you a little while ago has about 20 or 25 employees uh, total that are there, and typically what we do is we'll mix it up. Sometimes we'll bring five or six pizzas, and it seems like everybody's doing a five or five and a half dollar pizza deal these days, so we're not spending a whole heck of a lot of money buying the pizzas. Um, but what we are doing is picking up five or six pizzas, picking up sodas, picking up desserts, and making sure that there's plenty of food there for everybody. And then on the pizzas that we put down, there are lots and lots of cards with our information on it, basically saying, hey, guys, thank you for sending us all the information, sending us all the clients that you've been sending us. We really do appreciate all the support that you've given us. Have a meal on us. And basically, you're, you're just kind of breeding goodwill. You've got all these people that have been really great about sending you clients, and you're, you're making them say, hey, you know, this is fantastic. We just got a free lunch. And for the nurses and doctors especially, who every single day they're sitting there having to rush to pull things together to leave in the morning, not only to get their kids out the door and get their kids on the school bus and get their lunch ready, but then also fix their own lunch for work, well, it gives them a few extra minutes each day where they don't have to fix the lunch for themselves. They can spend a few extra minutes with their family and the kids. And it always puts them in a better mood knowing that, hey, we got a free lunch, and they thank us for that. Sometimes we'll do a sub. Sometimes we'll go get a huge pasta dish. We've done barbecue. And it's never really cost us more than like $50 to do it. But we always get great thank yous from them, and we've built up great fans who are basically saying, you know what, thank you for the lunch. We want to continue to show our support to you for bringing us the free lunch and also putting these great portraits in our office. So that's another thing you can do that's really great from the marketing standpoint. Uh, other things, and I'm going to touch on these really quickly because I know time-wise we've got a lot left to cover. Uh, charity events and word of mouth are huge for us as well. Charity events, uh, we'll do, we, we do probably a dozen charity events a year where we're doing uh, silent auctions and, and uh, the live auctions as well. And a few of the questions that we always ask, and these are things that are going to be important, do you have a live auction? And if so, what is the minimum requirement to be a part of the live auction? Uh, typically, they want you to be giving a larger value in the gift that you're giving. And we're happy to do that because if you're part of the live auction, number one, the live auction always gets more hype than the silent auction because they're, those are the bigger items that are going to draw more money. So they're going to talk about those a lot more. But additionally, during the live auction, they're standing up on a stage with a microphone and they're talking about how great the product is. If it's a cruise, oh, it's this fantastic cruise. You're going to get wined and dined and free cocktails and sitting in the sun. Well, they're going to do the same thing for your portraits. They're going to stand up there. They're going to be holding the portraits that you provided and talk about, hey, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience to have beautiful portraits that are become, going to become heirlooms to your family and passed down through generations. They're going to do all they can, and they're going to mention your studio name over and over and over again. And that's priceless because the reality is if you're on a table in a silent auction, yes, it's a great opportunity for exposure, but not everybody's probably going to see that. And not everybody's necessarily thinking that there's an, an interest or a need for portraits, so they may just walk right by. But if there's a time when all of a sudden you've got the captive audience and everybody is sitting there having to listen to what the person's talking about, then they're excited by the hype and they may say, you know what, I really could use a new family portrait or whatever. So getting to be part of the live auction is huge. The other thing that we did start to do so that we could make better use of the silent auction part was rather than having one large item that was $1,000 or $1,200 in the silent auction that only appealed to one small group like a family portrait, what we started doing was offering three to four small items. Uh, we would do a family portrait session, a maternity or an infant session, and a business portrait session. And we would ask them very specifically, please sprinkle these around the room. Don't put them right beside each other. 
So what that did was, number one, it gave us a chance to hit multiple parts, uh, multiple people that would have different things that they may be interested in. You know, if they're walking around and they see a maternity session and they're not interested in maternity session, but later on they come around and say, hey, you know what, I do need a new business portrait. I should sign up for that. That's a great opportunity for me to uh, update the business portrait that I'm using for my own website, my business cards, or I do need a family portrait session or whatever. So it gives you an opportunity to be seen three or four different times throughout the room, and it also gives you a chance to appeal to a much larger audience because you're showing more. And then last but not least is word of mouth. Uh, word of mouth is huge for us. And this is, again, a part of providing a great experience for our clients. Uh, we wine and dine our clients, and we're going to talk about that quite a bit. We wine and dine our clients when they come in for their portrait sessions to make them feel extremely comfortable. So while they're here, we want to make sure that they had an amazing experience, not only with the photographs that they're getting, but just in general. So that when they go back out and they're telling their friends, you've got to see my photos, you've got to see my photos, and I had the best time while I was there, then that's going to breed fantastic sales for you. I would say probably 40 or 50 percent of our maternity sessions now are actually referrals from other clients. So we've got a pretty even number. About half of them are from displays and from marketing, and about half of them are from word of mouth, which is really cool. And I'm going to talk about something that we're doing a little bit later toward the end of our program that's really, really cool uh, that helps out with the word of mouth. So real quick, we're going to show you about a two-and-a-half-minute video of some of our maternity work, and then I'm going to talk about our sessions and the things that we do. So enjoy. So that's a little bit of our portrait work, and I just wanted to kind of give you a feel for what we do uh, during our sessions through the work that you see. So let's, let's talk a little bit about 
being really, really successful during your portrait sessions. And this is really this is really the important stuff that you need to know to make sure that you're successful. Uh, covering the basics, first of all, cl clothing advice is number one. When a client calls in and talks to us, you know, we're going to go through, if, if not a, an in-person session where they come in and talk to us beforehand, we're going to talk to them on the phone and go through the things that they need. And clothing advice is, is kind of number one. Uh, we provide all of the drapes that you saw in there the black drapes, the white drapes, the various things that you saw, the, the shears that were in there. But for the father, we always tell them, hey, make sure that he's bringing, you know, black slacks with a black shirt and either khakis or linen pants with a white shirt. And if he doesn't have that, he can bring jeans. But just knowing in advance the various clothing that, that, that we need them to bring is really important. It's probably the kiss of death for a session for somebody to show up and not have the right things. The beautiful thing about maternity for us is that most of what the main person is wearing, we're providing. And if we were to rely on the client to bring stuff all the time, there's always going to be some issues with them bringing the wrong things. Um, avoid unnecessary retouching is another huge thing for us. We always tell all of our clients, you know, we know how, how dry your skin gets and how much you want to put your belly butter or your butter your belly lotion on. But in the morning of your session, please don't put any on because basically what happens is when the light hits your stomach with all that lotion on it, you've got this big shiny belly that now the light hits it and you've got this giant glowing orb sitting in front of you. And while I can retouch dry skin, it's not nearly as easy to retouch a blown out area where there's no information, there's no detail. So don't put any lotion on on the morning of your session on your belly so that we don't have a big shiny belly. The other thing we ask them to do is not to wear socks the morning of their session. And if they have bra straps on their shoulders, to remove the shoulder straps of their bra so that they don't have bra lines on their shoulders and they don't have sock lines on their ankles. Um, it's one of those things that it makes me crazy when I see a session that somebody's done where they didn't remove the sock lines or the bra lines, and you've got these really harsh, heavy uh, dips in the skin from those things that could have easily been taken care of if they were just told, hey, don't wear these things in advance. And then get a clear picture. You know, you really need to talk to them about their body image. One of the things, and if any of you have ever seen the movie, uh, the TV show Nip Tuck that was on FX for a number of years, it was about a couple of plastic surgeons, and one of the things they did when they sat down with their patient was they always asked them, tell me what you don't like about yourself. And essentially, that's what you're kind of trying to ask your client. And a lot of times, we'll come out and tell, you know, outright say, tell me what things you're uncomfortable with about yourself. Because if I know that in advance, it's going to make it easier for me to address those issues while we're photographing rather than finding out from you later. It's a real pain if you don't know, hey, you know, I don't like my double chin or I don't like the way my arms look or whatever it may be. Uh, if you don't know those things and you don't address them, then you're in Photoshop later on with a liquify tool trying to touch stuff up. But if you know certain things later on, uh, if you know certain things, then during the session you can address them, like having them lift their chin to eliminate the double chin, like wrapping a piece of black shear around their arms while they're cupping their belly to cover their arms up a little bit. Uh, the way you turn them, the way you angle them, the way you light them will help de-emphasize certain things that they already have told you they really don't like about the way they look right now. So if you can address those issues at the very beginning, then when they're in the portrait session, they're going to feel a lot more comfortable. And in the preview session, they're going to be a lot more apt to spend money with you. And then all in the family is just asking them who they're bringing to the session. The last thing you want is a surprise of thinking that it's just the mom showing up and all of a sudden she shows up with two or three extra kids and the father that all want to be in the portrait session and you weren't aware of that. Uh, number one, you probably didn't have the opportunity to tell them that they all need to bring clothing that needs to look a certain way. And number two, you may not have been prepared to photograph that much. So if you have back-to-back -back sessions, you know, a lot of times if we know we've got extra kids coming that are going to be in the session with the mom and dad, we make sure that we actually actually allow extra time for that. Number one, because there are more people in that session, but anytime we have multiple kids, in addition to photographing those kids 
with mommy in the belly, we're actually going to photograph each kid individually because anytime I have children in my studio, even if they're here for a family portrait session, I am going to photograph each of those kids individually because that is another sales opportunity. You have to make sure you photograph everybody individually. Essentials, and here's the big things that you need, uh, black and white drapes, black and white shears, and you know we are huge fabric shoppers. Uh, in fact, we, we hit the Walmart has like a, I think it's a dollar section where they have bolts of fabric that are near the end. And we're always going to check to see what's over there and see how much is left. Our rule of thumb is we always try to buy seven yards of everything. Uh, and that basically came from us going through and when we bought a piece of fabric, we would cut a piece that could drape around the bottom as essentially a long skirt and then another piece that could be used across the top as essentially a tube top. And then uh, we would, it's, it was always nice to have an extra piece just in case you miscut. And what we found was if you have less than seven yards, a lot of times if you mess up on your cut, then you just wasted that piece of fabric and it's not going to work for you anymore. Plus the shears to us, we like to have the shears long enough that I can basically have them hold their arms out, spread full length, palms up and drape it across their arms and then all the way down to the floor on both sides. If that's the case, then seven yards is always going to work for that. We just want to make sure that they have more than enough fabric to do that with. So, you know, you'll, you'll see if you were ever to come to our studio, we've got shelves and shelves of fabrics that we can pull out and really customize. Small plastic lamps and there's actually little, little teeny tiny uh, metal ones as well. Uh, they're about 50 cent each. You can get them at Home Depot and sometimes at Lowe's. Home Depot always has the little metal ones. Uh, the plastic ones come in huge bags. You get like 15 or 20 different size clamps and it's got little teeny tiny ones and they're about 10 bucks. Uh, but you can get the little metal ones for 50 or 60 cent. And they're really, really nice. The metal ones hold a little bit better, but they all do just fine. A model background, we always try to go with the dark model background. Uh, primarily because it just doesn't distract. We don't want any type of background that's going to distract from, from the subject that we're photographing. And then we'll use a solid white background as well. Um, and if, we, if the mono background has a color in it, we typically use one that has touches of green in it because green really emphasizes skin tones better than any other color uh, when it comes to backgrounds. It picks up those reds and the, the reds that are naturally in your skin tone really nicely. And then we always have a robe that gives the mom a little bit of comfort knowing that when she's going back and forth from our dressing room to the camera room that she can cover up and she can feel a little bit more modest. And tons and tons of bottled water. Um, we actually had a session that we were photographing for a posing video that we did. And because we were photographing, it, because we were filming it, for a training video, it took about three hours, and we were doing all we could to pump water into this mom because we just know how important it is for them to drink. And we, you know, she just, I'm not thirsty, I'm okay, I'm not thirsty, and we were basically trying to force water down her throat, and she just refused. And the next day, she had to go to the hospital because she was dehydrated, and it was just one of those, you know, as hard as we tried to force her to drink, and even her husband was, we should have tried even harder and just said, we're not going to shoot again until you drink water. You have to make your clients drink water. You know, it's just so important. Even if they don't think they need to drink water, they should drink water. So make sure you have something around. Uh, spicing it up a little bit, and, and back, you know, real quick, touching back on the water, make sure that you have some snap uh, snacks as well, uh, ginger snaps, crackers, things like that, just in case. Uh, you know, some some women experience morning sickness throughout their entire pregnancy. So having snacks like crackers and ginger snaps are really nice because they'll help with nausea. And, you know, that can really slow a session down if somebody's not feeling well or if their blood sugar drops. You want to make sure you have something for them. Spicing it up, the colored shears that you saw in our sessions, we're always looking for colored shears. We make sure we have a pink and a blue on hand, but we also have other colors like lavenders and greens because occasionally we'll have a mom that comes in and they've decided that they don't want to find out the sex of the baby. So you need to have something that's a little bit more neutral. Uh, various colors of flowers, again, same thing. We have pink flowers, we have blue flowers, and then we have neutral colored flowers as well. We try to match the color of flower to each shear. So 
we usually have Gerber daisies, the large uh, fabric Gerber daisies. And every time we buy a new piece, new piece of fabric, we go over to the flower section, and the Gerber daisies cost about a buck, so we'll spend a buck. And usually we'll buy two of them, so we'll spend a couple of bucks and buy a couple of Gerber daisies to go along with it. Rose petals, you know, and everybody sells these boxes of rose petals, and they're like $6 for a box of them. It's, it's pretty pricey. And what we found was uh, Michael's Craft Stores and some of the other craft stores sell these. It's a dollar bunch of roses for 99 cents. And we would buy that, and while we were sitting around watching TV, we'd take a pair of scissors and just clip off the rose petals ourselves. And we ended up with about three times as many rose petals off of that as we did from the box that we were paying six bucks for, and we were only paying 99 cents for it and just sitting there while we were watching TV or doing something else. So it was it was a nice, I mean, it's only 4 or $5, but at the end of the day, every 4 or $5 counts right now. And then fur blankets. Uh, and I'm trying to remember the name. And if you guys email me, I'll, I'll send you the information on the name of it. It's like, I want to say Facacia, but that's a kind of bread or something like that. But there's a specific kind of blanket that mimics fur. Uh, and it's not the fur fabric that you get in the fabric store because that tends to pull out. So when you're photographing a baby on that and they put their mouth on it, all the fabric is going to pull out. The fuzz is going to get all over them. This looks very, very much like fur. It's a very nice, comfortable, soft blanket. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't come off any, so they don't have fur all over them when they stand up or on their fabrics and shears and stuff like that. And they're not that expensive. Uh, so if you guys email me, Pete, at pwphotography.com, I'll be glad to send you information on that and any other props or items that we've talked about. Uh, pampering mom, and we talked about this earlier, uh, providing a robe is really, really, it's a nice touch, and you can get robes for anywhere from 10 to $30 at Walmart or Target or Sears or Pennies, and it's just, you know, if they're going to be walking around in little or nothing, it's just nice to give them a hint of modesty of saying, here's a robe, feel free to use it if you'd like, just to, you know, kind of cover up when you're walking around. It's just a nice touch. They don't have to use it if they don't want to, but it's nice to offer it to them. Climate control is huge, um, and it's completely different from the maternity session to the infant session. When we have a maternity session, we take our studio's temperature about 5 degrees cooler than what it normally is, and when we have an infant session, we take our temperature about 5 degrees warmer than what it normally is. In fact, during the winter, we'll actually get little tiny space heaters and point the space heaters directly at the area where we're shooting just to make sure. Um, for mom, you know, when you're pregnant, you have heat flashes and you're carrying extra weight, so you're really, really warm. I don't care what time of year it is. So if you're going to be standing around and have hot lights pointed at you, then anything you can do to be comfortable is great. So if we can bring that temperature down 5 degrees so that they're not roasting and that they're comfortable, that session is going to last longer. And then music is important, too. I, I, you know, the, the most uncomfortable thing during a portrait session for a client is silence. Uh, and just to prove the point, see how awkward that silence was? That was probably not even 10 seconds of me not talking. But imagine you're standing there having your portrait taken, and you're half naked because you're wearing a tube top and uh, and and a drape on the bottom. So you're half naked in front of a photographer that you barely know having your portrait taken, and they're walking around adjusting lights and and fixing reflectors and making sure that their lens is on their camera, and you're just standing there. Well, if you just put on some soft music for them, some Nora Jones or some Diana Kroll, a little bit of jazz, something just soft that can relax them, it gives them the ability to kind of tune out and go into that, and they're going to be relaxed a lot more during the session rather than if you just have nothing on at all, and they've got all these awkward silences, and talk to them. You know, I know you're busy and you're trying to do things, but make sure you're engaging your client and you're talking to them, asking them, is this your first child? When is it due? How excited are you? Have you finished decorating your nursery yet? What color themes do you have? You know, think of various questions. Just have them in the back of your mind. Give them things to talk about that takes them out of the session and into something they're excited about. And then we talked about nourishment. 
I can't, again, express how important that is. Uh, it, it's just so important that you have food and munchies there for them as well as water. The shoot. And this is, this is super important. Capture what sells first. Um, you know, we all get excited about doing fun, neat photos that are really, really cool and edgy, whether it's the shears that are pulled back with the flowers and stuff like that or, you know, whatever it may be. Those are fantastic, but at the end of the day, let's say you have a session and those photos just don't come out or they don't work and that's the only thing you got because midway through the session, mom started feeling bad and she needed to take off well then you're probably not going to have a whole lot to sell. So we, we do certain poses that are standard at the beginning of all of our sessions. We do the black drapes and the white drapes as a standard for every single session. Then when that's done, then we go through and we go into the various shears and the color fabrics and things like that. The importance of that is those black, those black drapes and those white drapes are predictable. I know they're going to look the exact same every single time. Now, from a photographer standpoint, yes, it gets boring to do the same thing over and over and over again at every single session. And you get back and you say, I want to do something new. I want to do something different. I got to mix it up. Well, you got to consider the fact that your client has probably never seen that and has probably never had that portrait taken and in many cases probably came to you because they saw those on your website. So they're not bored with them, just you are. So, you know, yes, it's boring to take the same thing over and over again, but you know what, if it's really, really good and it's really, really predictable, then you, you, you have to do it because you know for a fact that you've got a foundation of great photos to show during your sales appointment. Then you go through at the end of your session, after you capture the things that you know are going to be predictable, that sell at first, then you go through and you experiment and you play. Uh, a good friend of ours, Clay Blackmore, said, uh, you know, he says, one for you, one for me. The one for you is the portrait that maybe isn't that exciting for us, but we know is going to be good. We know they're going to like it. And the one for me is the portrait that gives me a chance to stretch my legs a little bit and play and experiment and try new things. And if you do it with that approach, then you can almost guarantee that you're always going to end up with great photos to show. Uh, pose and light, light it properly to produce uh, Photoshop. That's really, really important. And I'm going to show you a diagram in a minute of how we light and pose things. Uh, you know, I've always said if you get it right in the camera, you're going to spend a lot less time in Photoshop. At the end of the day, the more time we spend in the sales room and behind the camera, you know, the, that's, that makes our time more profitable. I don't want to spend a lot of time in Photoshop. And if I've got it looking really, really good in camera, then I'm not using Photoshop to fix things. I'm using Photoshop to enhance things. And that's what Photoshop really should be about. It should be about enhancement. Having a female assistant to help with nudes is really, really important. Now, we don't do outright nudes in our studio, so there will never be a time when, a, uh, when any of our clients are exposed. Uh, but we do have clients that will come in and say, I want to do a session where I'm nude. Uh, and we'll say, okay, we're gonna, we'll do nudes, but your arm is going to cover your breasts and your legs are going to be positioned in a way that covers anything that we don't want to see down there. We want to make sure that they're fully covered, primarily because we're in a very conservative market. So you have you know, certain people that if they see you're shooting a certain things, they won't come into you because they think, well, that's what they want to photograph. They want to photograph me nude. Um, so we just, in our studio, we choose not to do that. But when we do have nudes, I always have Liliana go in the room and pose them and put them in the position that we need them in while I leave the room. And then I come back in to actually take the photographs. Uh, and then last but not least, put Dad to work. If Dad is there, don't let him get bored. Dad's going to be bored out of his mind if he's just sitting there watching Mom get photographed over and over and over again. Have fun with him also and joke around and talk to him. But, you know, if mom's going to lay on the floor and she's going to get down on the floor, then he needs to help her up and down. And helping her up, he actually needs to go down on his knee like he's proposing to her and put one hand under, under her arm and then let her use his knee to push up. But he, he basically needs to make sure that he's helping her up in a way that doesn't use her core muscles so that she's not, you know, contracting anything. And then 
have him hold those shears when the shears are being pulled back and different things like that. Make him feel important. Make him feel like he's part of the session. That's going to make that session even more successful. Here's our lighting diagram. We use two kicker lights in the back to light from the back side. Uh, we use a 4 by 6 soft box uh, or either a 7-foot octobank on uh, either the left or right-hand side. It just kind of depends on the client. And then a reflector on the other side for fill. It's always, always predictable for us that way. And you'll notice I always have our maternity sessions turn into the light. Now, there's the saying, don't broad light abroad. We typically don't uh, in a regular portrait session. But when we're photographing for a maternity session, we always like to light the belly and really show how amazing it is. Uh, there's different styles. Some people like to put the belly in the shadow. I actually like to show the belly. I think it makes for a more pleasant photograph. Um, another thing we do, and this is our posing guide. Uh, we actually created this posing guide for our studio. Uh, basically what we would do is we would show uh, if we had a client that we needed to help them understand the pose that we needed them to go, with, them to go into, we would actually flip through the book and show them the various poses. Uh, so we created this to say, okay, Dad, we need you to lay down just like this. Put your hand on the belly. Mom, put your hand on top. And then, Dad, I need your chin to end up right in, uh, right, right there in her neck, in the nape of her neck, and give her a kiss right on the neck. And here's a picture to show you exactly what to do. So we created this for that, but then we actually uh, had photographers that saw us showing it when we spoke and we started selling it. So we do sell these posing guides if people are interested in them and they're hugely helpful. Uh, so we've got the poses all throughout that, that show and give a description at the bottom of exactly what they need to do. And the key thing we did was we, at the beginning we did all of the standard poses that we do at every maternity session and then in the back we actually put a, what we call a bonus pose section where we did the various sheer pullbacks and some of the nudes, that the covered nudes, and some of the what we call our wow photos that are the ones that we do at the end of a session. We put all of those back there to show to the client and said, go through these. Everything in the front of the book we're going to do is a standard, but flip through the back of there. Any photos that you see that you really, really love, let me know so that we can make sure we include that in your session. That really helps guide the session to make sure that it's successful and we're getting the things that they want and need. Um, so really quick, and I'm going to breeze through this, but pricing and packaging, uh, you know, you, you see I've got written here walking with a limp. You know, it's great if you're going out and you're taking beautiful portraits and you're getting everything done to show beautiful imagery, but if you don't have it priced right, if you're not putting good pricing on it, then you're really walking with a limp. You've got one good leg and then one bad one. Um, PPA standards say if you're pricing your your 8 by 10s below $40, you're actually losing money. And so many people today want to go out and say, oh, I'll shoot your maternity session for $100 and give you a disc. Well, at the end of the day, you're really losing money on that because you spend at least an hour, if not more, doing the maternity session. Then you're spending another hour plus editing the photos down and then at least another hour or so going through and doing your retouching and getting your color corrections and everything done. And at the end of the day, you've spent three, four, five hours to give them a disc and you've only made a hundred bucks. And it's just not worth it to do that. In fact, we, we do not offer a disc of images from our portrait sessions at all. It's just not a scenario where that works. Uh, if you're a new photographer, you know, the reality is this, our industry has existed for hundreds and hundreds of years, well, hundreds of years, based on the fact that we live for resale prints. This is what we do. That's what our industry is. So if we're giving them a disc, then we're essentially cutting our nose off because we've just eliminated a huge part of our profits giving them a disc. You need to make sure that you're selling prints. And you need to also make sure that when you're selling your prints that you're pricing them properly. So if you're selling an 8 by 10 for less than $40, then you're really not recouping your costs. You need to not just say, okay, well, it only costs me $2 or $3 to buy an 8x10, so I could sell it for 6 and I just doubled my profit. No, you doubled your cost, but you didn't double your profit. Your cost on your, your, cost on your 8x10, um, the actual physical piece of paper, is just one, one factor. At the end of the day, you need to make sure that you're accounting for your time and labor you're covering your rent for the facility that you're photographing in. 
that you're covering the expense of your employee that's having to package it and send it out, the person that's uploading it to collages for being viewed. There's so many different things like that that you have to account for in the price of your prints. So don't just don't base your price of your prints based on what you're paying for. Base the price of your prints on lots of different factors. Um, <clears throat> with us, for our pricing and packaging, we have three different ways that we do our pricing, and each one of them are set to help move people to the next pricing. This is sample pricing just to kind of help you out. Um, a la carte would just be if you went through, and it's the most expensive way for a client to buy prints, if you just went through and said, I want to do a 4 by 6 of this, 5 by 7 of this, 8 by 10 of this, not doing packages, it basically just rolls through and lets them pick what they want for each item. Uh, packages, packages are basically set up to give them a slight discount over a la carte, but it also limits them on poses. And as you see, on the right hand side there, it shows you what you're spending and it also shows you what you're saving if you were to be doing it a la carte. So it's showing them the savings right off the bat. And then collections, uh, collections were basically set up as the ability basically to go one step further for those clients that say, well I want a lot of poses and I want even more savings, but I also want mini albums and discs with DVD slideshows and all kinds of other stuff like that as well. So we have something to appeal to each client and I'd love to spend more time on this. Uh, if you guys have questions for me on our pricing and packaging and why we set them up the way we do and why we have three because typically like on this one your, your pricing should always be set up so that you have the ability to try to get them to your middle pricing. Uh, if they're at the if if your low end your low end pricing should be set up to get them in the door, your high end pricing should be set up to make the next the next one look the best. So that's the way your pricing always needs to be set up so that each one is made made to make the next one look better. Your low pricing makes the makes them come in. Your high pricing makes that middle package look really really great. Uh, we have our portrait programs uh, that are set up for albums and various things like that. Uh, basically, they include the sessions and a certain number of portraits that can work into the album. So again, the goal for us with this, they don't get any loose prints when they get into these portrait programs. Uh, what they get is a session and an album. Now, and it's pretty inexpensive. For $799, they can get an album that includes three sessions and a certain number of portraits from each session. At the end of the day, these people aren't going to come in, your clients are going to come in and do a session with you and then not have any prints other than what's in the album. They're going to order 4 by 6s and 5 by 7s and 8 by 10s and do packages and the grandparents are going to order packages. So a $799 uh, family uh, year in the life program or a new life program is going to probably net us five to $6,000 in individual sales. Club Mom, and I told you I'd touch on this. This is, and I know I'm over time, so I'm going to go real quickly through this. Club Mom, we took the approach that we took with high school seniors. High school seniors, we have our model program, or some people will call it um, their their ambassador program, or whatever. And we said, you know, why can't we do that with moms? We have moms that absolutely love what we do and love our work already. So why can't we have a referral program for them? So we created Club Mom. And essentially what we do with Club Mom is from each, from, for each one of our clients, we will go through it and we will create a card for them. One side of the card has our favorite photo from their most recent session and our logo. And then the other side has an offer that says, come try PW Photography. Uh, and it will be usually, again, either a free session or half off of a session and a free 5 by 7 so come try PW Photography, blah, 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 and it'll have information about our sessions on there. And for every one of those cards that comes back with that specific photo on it, we automatically know, okay, well, this photo belongs to Mrs. Smith. Well, for every one of those photo cards that comes back uh, and the, we create a new client, we give them $100 credit and it can be spent any way they want. So if they send us 10 new clients and all 10 clients go through the sales process with us, then they've got a thousand dollar credit and they can use it as a thousand dollars any way they want. They can get a thousand dollars worth of prints, 
thousand dollars towards an album, whatever they want. And in our mind, if our average sale from a portrait session is fourteen hundred dollars, and they just sent us ten clients, then we just made fourteen thousand dollars off of that one client. We gave up a thousand dollars to do it. And our clients love the idea that, hey, if we're already going to talk about you, it's awful nice to get paid to do it. So if we're offering them $100 to come back in and say, I really want to get more portraits, well, I'll tell you what, you can get them for free if you send more of your friends into us. It works out really, really nicely. So Club Mom is fantastic. We even did a website to kind of support Club Mom and went around and got extra vendors that uh, we gave our Club Mom members a membership card that if they took it to those these various retail stores that they would get additional discounts. So it actually added extra value to Club Mom. Uh, last but not least, uh, lots and lots of things here. Uh, we use collages.net for all of our digital style albums. It's They're fantastic. Uh, they, we use them primarily because their turnaround is super, super quick. And in terms of the gutter that's in the middle of the page, it is the smallest gutter in the industry. So you don't have a gutter. Uh, almost virtually no gutter there, which is fantastic. Uh, we use Michael Company for our matted style albums, the more traditional albums. Uh, custom framing we do in the studio, but we decided a few years ago that we were not a frame shop, so we got rid of our wall that had four or five hundred frames on it because we realized we were spending as much time helping pick out a frame as we were just selling them the portraits that they were buying. And frames, while there is profit in them, there's not nearly as much profit in them. So what we did was we chose about a dozen of our favorite frames that were really nicely versatile and said, you know, these are the frames that we offer. If you'd like to get framing from us, we are a fraction of the cost of a custom frame shop. Uh, and these are the ones we could choose from. Uh, if you want something other than that, then you would probably need to go to a custom frame shop. Uh, our clients actually embraced it. We've had higher frame sales over the last two years than we've ever had because it was simpler for the client. They loved the idea that they didn't have to look through 400 frames. They could just go through a dozen and pick the ones that they like, and it was so quick and easy. Uh, gallery wraps and birth announcements also through collages.net, fantastic. Uh, Animoto slideshows we sell as well. It's a product that we offer to our clients, and we use it for our website or our, our blog and our uh, Facebook pages. They're really, really nice touches, and uh, Animoto is quick and easy to use. Desktop portraits, which is like a 5 by 10 portrait that are fantastic, um, that, that the client can use as a panel to show like the hands and the feet and the full body or various little things like that. Those are really good sellers for us and really nice as well. And then little mini album and brag books are fantastic as well. Uh, a lot of times we'll actually send those as a surprise gift to clients if they've done a nice size purchase with us. We'll actually, uh, when they come to pick up their, their purchase from us, we'll have a little mini album book for, brag book for them. I think we get the little brag books for like 6 or $7 from Michael Company, and then we'll order the uh, individual wallets from Clodges.net to place on the, in the book to give to the client. Um, you know, and this is the last slide. Products, what good is a pool without a diving board? You know, if you've got great portraits and you're offering really nice sales, you know, it's kind of like having a pool. If you don't, having a really, really nice pool. But then if you don't have those great album gallery wraps and all those various fun things that are nice to sell, then you don't have that really fun diving board to dive off of and you don't have the slide and all those other fun things. If you add these extra items, they're add-on sales. They're the extra things that, number one, make you a boutique studio versus just a regular studio because you're offering boutique items. Uh, but they also just they make it a lot more fun, and they're going to help drive your sales up. So, guys, I know I rushed there a little bit at the end and probably didn't spend as much time. If you have additional questions, please don't hesitate to uh, call me. It's Pete at pwphotography.com. And I'm going to turn things back over to Kevin. Thank you guys for attending, and I'll answer some questions. Uh, so we have a lot of good questions that were coming in throughout the webinar. Um, so I'm just going to ask you a couple here that uh, I feel like you'd be the best one to uh, to answer for the photographers since you're the, the expert. But uh, when you are actually um, – giving images or, or working on the gallery wraps for, uh, for the doctor's office or, um, or, or for, for the baby store, do, uh, do, does, does the 
doctor's office pay for the portraits uh, or for the items, and does the store give you anything towards points, towards pictures when they hit the two, uh, the $2,500 mark? Not at all. No. You know, it, it's we make our money off of what we do in studio and the reality is we provide those portraits to the doctor's office and to the store uh, because it, it's a way of advertising and showing our work there it's to us the equivalent of buying a billboard on the road or paying for an ad in a magazine we're just paying for that ad we're paying for that advertising in their store so we would never ask them to pay for it uh, and we even had doctor's offices offer to pay for it. We always turn it down. Uh, when you turn that down, it just offers, you know, goodwill that, hey, you know, they were willing to do this for us for free. And, no, we never ask for a cut of the sales if they hit that certain number. Uh, to me, it's a big enough bonus that I just got referred you know, what I guess Vegas would call a whale. You know, if somebody was willing to spend $2,500 on a crib, then that's the client I want in my studio. That was a pretty good bonus, so I don't need a percentage of their sale. And, you know, if you can get that, that's great, but, you know, I'd be afraid of asking for that because it would probably turn off the store. Okay. Um, and then also, what are you using for your side lights from the, uh, the diagram you showed earlier? The side lights, they're kicker lights. We shoot with all photogenic in studio. Uh, photogenic lights, and then we've got, uh, I want to say, 17 by 50 kicker soft boxes from F.J. Westcott. Okay. All of our soft boxes are Westcott. Very nice. Um, now, the as far as the poses that you went through, um, I, I know you had said that, that it was a very popular request after you do you do talks for people to purchase these. Is there an, is there some way that, that anyone can go that's attending the webinar to um, to purchase these from you or to see what you've included? Absolutely. If um, if you email me again, Pete at pwphotography.com, or if you email my wife, Liliana, L-I-L-I-A-N-A -L -I -L -I -A -A, at pwphotography.com, we're happy to send you information about the posing guides. You can buy them either printed or digitally. And I want to say they start at $100, and uh, there may be, I think, I think we do the digital one, for fifty dollars and the printed one for a hundred dollars, and it's the exact same book. In fact, if you get the the disc for fifty dollars, you can actually print it and do a bound book yourself and have it digitally. So you get the fifty dollar or the hundred dollar option on that if you'd like. Okay, excellent. And then in your in your packages, when you say poses, does that mean the number of images, or can you exp can you just explain that a, a little further as far as how you have that package sure. and priced out? Absolutely. And Kevin, can you all still see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Let me uh, go back to that real quick because I hated breezing through that so quickly. I felt like I really didn't touch on that very much. Um, as far as hoses goes, that's the number of images or uh, number of different images that they are putting within the package. So like with the gift hose, let's say I took 40 or 50 images. Then during the preview process, we went through and we narrowed it down to their favorite five or six. And they said, well, I want to get the gift package because I only have $189 to spend. Well, then they have to, out of that five or six photos, just out of their five or six favorite images, they have to choose just two, their two favorites, to mix and match any way they want within that package, which is the 1, 8 by 10, the 2, 5 by 7, the 3, 4 by 6, and the 8 wallets. Uh, they have to mix and match it in that way. Um, and additionally, they, if they want to buy add extra poses to it, they can. It's $25 to add an additional pose. And, you know, typically what we tell them when, uh, when we go through, we say, and it's kind of a little bit of a white lie, but it's true for us in that we build our packages based on uh, what our labs offer for us. So if, you know, we, we tell them, look, if our lab has to push the button an extra time, then it cost us extra money, meaning that third pose. So it just kind of explains to them why we charge for the extra poses because it's that much more that the lab has to do in terms of producing the images for them. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, and then I have another question here. Um, is it 
how are you selling your Animoto slideshows as far as the price range is concerned? We sell them two different ways. Uh, they can get their favorite 15 images set to music for $99 or their favorite 60 images. And, you know, most of the time there aren't 60 images from our sessions. We really try to keep it to 50 or below. Uh, but So we basically say your favorite 60 images or up to your favorite 60 images for $175 uh, is what we do. But okay. if you saw in the collections, which I'll go back to collections here, uh, it's actually right there. You can see it says DVD slideshow, any 15 images. So that $99 value is included in this collection, and it's adding extra value. Okay. Um, and then I also have last question here. For maternity shoots outside, do you ever get into those and – if so, how you can uh, up your maternity shoot sales out by doing them outside? You know, we try not to. Uh, I think I showed one maternity session that was outside. It was actually of my wife when she was uh, seven months pregnant. Uh, we went to like a desert-looking spot and did a really beautiful portrait over there. Uh, you know, I think outside maternity sessions are beautiful, so I don't knock them at all. But what I, what I do knock about an out, outside only maternity session is that they're somewhat limiting and they're, they're very unpredictable. You're, you're never really positive about what you're going to get in terms of the lighting and the atmosphere. It could rain and mess you up. Um, if, if we were to do some outside stuff where we said, okay, it's right across the street from us, from our studio, we've got a field of uh, wheat, like tall, tall wheat type stuff, and we'll, we'll occasionally have somebody, someone to go over and do something there. That's great. We're always going to start with inside first because, again, rain or shine, I'm able to photograph. Uh, if the sun goes behind the clouds or if the sun is pounding, it doesn't affect me. I am able to get a predictable photo every single time and know exactly how my sale is going to go. And then at the end, if they want to go outside and do some stuff, that's great. It's uh, we never do outdoor only session maternity sessions. In fact, with us, I, you know, it's very rare that we ever do any at all. Okay. Um, and the last question that I have for you: How long is your average maternity session? About an hour is about typical for us. Uh, like I said, we'll add a little extra time in it if they are bringing children that are going to be photographed as well. Uh, but if it's just a mom or just a mom and dad, it's an hour long. Uh, very rarely, if ever, do we go over an hour. And it's just one of those things, uh, through the use of the posing guide and through having done this for a long time, I can go through all the black drapes very quickly, all the white drapes very quickly. I spend about 20 minutes on the black drapes, about 20 minutes on the white drapes, and then 20 minutes doing those wow shots with the colored drapes and the various other fabrics and things like that. Uh, but so then if uh, they bring additional family members like children and stuff like that, I'll usually add an extra 30 minutes just to give myself time to go through and do individual portraits as well. Okay, excellent. Um, so I am going to transfer the screen back over to my end. Um, that does conclude our webinar today. And I want to thank everyone that, that did attend. Um, I hope you guys uh, learned a lot. I know Pete went over so many important uh, facts and information that you can really use with uh, and incorporate into your studio. Um, I also want to let you guys know that we are going to be continuing part two of this webinar next Wednesday, August 10th at 11 a.m. Um, and, and, and Pete, if you have you know maybe like a, a sentence or two just to describe what we'll be going over exactly in that webinar for anyone that, that is still in the webinar, um, they'll kind of get a sneak peek of what's to come next week. Sure. That's, that's the follow-up session. That's going to be about infant photography. Um, to us, the maternity session is just the start. We do the maternity session basically to introduce them to our services, to get them comfortable with our services, and also get them familiar with the sales process. Uh, and, and the reason that's important is when they come in with a baby for uh, the first time, if they're not familiar with your sales process and they're frazzled because the baby starts crying or the baby gets hungry, 
it, it's not nearly as easy for them if they've been through the maternity session and they've been through the sales process with you. They know exactly how everything works and they kind of know uh, know what to expect. So if they go through and they've done the maternity session, then the input session is going to be so much easier for them. So we basically set the groundwork with everything that we talked about today. Uh, then they come in and they do the input session with us. We're going to go through all the different things that you need to do to make your input sessions predictable and get good sales from your input sessions. And we will touch a little bit more on the pricing in that one as well. All right, awesome. Um, I am going to change.